Good evening. Welcome to the Shadow Trader Video Weekly for Sunday, September 26th, 2010. Uh, remaining in this channel here in the markets, uh, still on an upswing, should continue for a little bit longer. If we look out onto a longer time frame, you can see we do have open space here with this where prices got just went straight down kind of here, flash crash, etc. Probably moves a little bit higher. I think at this point touching uh, 11.50 almost on the S&P, 11.48.90 was our high on Friday. We could easily go to 1,200. Remember that what's going on fundamentally or geopolitically or none of that matters. You know, what all that matters is more buying than selling. So the trend seems to be higher um, going forward. Let's take a quick look at uh, the other majors here. I don't see any resistance here on the NASDAQ or on the Dow. So Dow actually could go a little bit higher. I think that what we might be setting up for, which I think is going to be great, is the simple fact that the markets, especially looking at the Dow here, could make new 2010 highs. And then I think things are really going to go, you know, turn around. I think the market's going to kind of fake everybody out and probably make everybody feel safe at just the wrong time. Uh, the fall, we're going to have, we're in an election year. We're also going to have probably some policy change from the Fed. Something's just going to happen that's going to be the catalyst, I think, to kind of turn this thing around. And, and you know, stocks will probably turn around. So I'm bullish in the near term. But in the bigger picture, I am bearish. I think that we probably will see some sort of a turnaround by the end of the year. Back to the downside, um, I am certainly not even remotely beginning to bet on that. So please don't think that I'm shorting into this whatsoever. This is bullish. You have to stay bullish for now. You got to be buying stocks when the charts look like this. But there is going to be some sort of a turning point, I think, higher up where we're going to get mixed signals on breath, AD lines, tick readings, uh, new 52-week highs and lows, etc. Um, I might even throw some RSI, whatever, you know, all that stuff. Everything's going to probably eventually point to the fact that this rally is going to weaken as it makes new highs. And remember, if the rally is weakening under the hood as it's making those new highs, be aware that 99% of the investing public and the trading public does not pay attention to market internals or give any sort of deeper analysis other than looking at this chart right here. You can think of it that way, that the entire world just looks at this chart right here and is like, oh, it's it's 11,200. What, me worry? You know? And yet at the same time, this chart keeps doing this. And that's why I think you should be worried because that's the, the, the reason, you know, this is, the market is never wrong. And this market, I think, is, is telegraphing something really important. It's telling us that, that the smart money is not really believing in this too much, you know, in, in the other chart, right, in the, in the Dow chart, but they're believing in this chart, and that's where, where the money seems to be flowing. So those of you that follow my stuff, you know I'm long gold. I continue to be. I, I like the yellow metal. I think that we do go higher. Um, I actually was just on the phone with a colleague who was asking me, you know, do I take it now? Uh, because it's you know should continue to be bullish for a couple of years or wait for a pullback. I honestly think that right now you need to look for a pullback because the pullbacks are generally inevitable and they usually do come in a bit. Um, and you know I'm just leaving this trend line and this 20MA up. Uh, you can clearly see we have prior high here where which is about 123.60 in the GLD. Actually, it's probably a little bit lower. I'll move it down. 123.56, right? One one twenty three forty two. Excuse me. I'm just I, don't, I marked this for something else. But one twenty three forty two here. Those prior highs, which is going to tie in with the twenty, should come in and touch and maintain the uptrend. Um, I don't think we're ready to go into an absolute gold bubble where it just keeps going and starts to go parabolic just yet. So I think any pullbacks are definitely going to be viable. Um, those of you that have a little bit more moxie, if you like, um, one of the things that's been working for me really well is selling put premium in gold and GDX on the weeklies. You guys know I've been talking about the weekly options a little bit. So like GDX, for instance, trades weekly options and GLD also trades weekly options. So if you're bullish on it, there's put credit there that can be sold. Um, you know, And then if it does come out, you may be assigned and you may actually end up owning GLD or GDX at some area of the trend line. So you know, that's, that's really not a bad way to get into a long position. If you wanted to be long at that price anyway, why not just sell the puts? There's a lot of uh, bigger players who actually do that. They actually enter positions that way by just selling the put at the level that they wanted anyway, and then they get assigned, and then they still pocket the premium. So it's not a bad not a bad way to think about it. So you may want to be looking at that, especially given the fact that 
both GLD and GDX now trade weekly options, which is pretty exciting. Um, and I'll be talking more about weeklies in further videos um, as I've started to talk about in the past. Little by little, that's becoming a, a more core part of my methodology. So um, stocks that I like going forward in this bullish environment, I want to leave you guys with a couple of names. Check out ICE over here. Doom, 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 right? This is a really interesting pattern on the weeklies in that um, we have this weekly hammer forming, which is which would be bullish by itself. But the fact that it it made this sort of inverted head and shoulders and now high or low, and this stock has pretty good beta, it really starts to move. So I think you can really play it off of the weekly hammer and just cross it here. And it's interesting also that that cross over that bar would also cross this line, which is nice. It would it would break trend here, and we could see a little bit of movement up in the stock. Another thing I've been looking for is uh, EQT, which has a very similar pattern. Again, you have multiple waves lower. One, two, retrace, three, four. Now we're turning here. And again, we're turning where? At higher low with that same sort of hammer pattern. So you may want to be um, looking at that. Let me leave that and let's go to rig which is very interesting this is this company is obviously complicit in the gulf disaster and yet now that the well is dead so to speak it's been capped i think the stock has room to move back upwards and what's very interesting about it is that you've had two weeks now a very tight range Two dojis on the weeklies because of this consolidation level here. Cup and handle looks like it's want to turn higher. And as I always say, right, what's the best place to play is in between areas of congestion. And look at this big open space. This is just a beautiful field with gently rolling hills and beautiful sunshine. And Julie Andrews running across the grass singing. You know, I mean, this is just such a beautiful open space. I mean, you know, you're just like out in a meadow in the Alps here. Um, so it's the stock's probably a buy anywhere over these levels, and it could, you know, easily float up to the $80 range. Remember, this is a price void where nothing is there. All right, if you're in the bear camp, and you shouldn't be right now, I want to show you a couple of things. Not Foster Wheeler, scrap that. Um, you know I'm always interested in these cyclical counter trend type of plays for a quick hit. Okay, well, keep an eye on Murr which trades options, I believe it should. So you'll probably want to sell some call verticals up in here. What you want to do is kind of time that with about two weeks to expiry. That's your best bet. And you want to do it right when the stock is there. Okay, I can't stress this enough. One of the worst newbie amateur mistakes is to try to sell option premium just because it's far away. It's way up there. It's not going to go there by the third Friday. Uh-huh. Doesn't it all, however, doesn't it always seem to go just close enough to there to scare you out of your position? Of course it does. I've been there, done that years ago. I don't do that anymore. If I sell vertical, I only sell right when it's there very closely, or I do broken wing butterfly, right? We've talked about that, where I try to put long delta in front of the short delta, and then it's a, it completely changes your mindset about the whole play because you're like, wow, I, I own a long call. Great. Go there. You know, <laughs> keep rallying for the for the eighth week in a row. It's a, it's a very different mindset. So you got to think about that, all right? AT&T also coming into an area, possible resistance up here. I don't like this one so much as the, as much as the Murphys. I like Verizon though. I think Verizon. Notice that there's prior lows here. High, high prior lows, and then we're moving into that area. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Could be an option play. We'll see. All right. Just this. I'm just you know sharing. These are the things I think of. These are a few of my favorite things, so to speak, because we're on that theme. All right. See you guys next week. On behalf of myself and the entire Shadow Trader team here in beautiful, and it is very beautiful right now in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, city of brotherly love. We're having a beautiful Indian summer, about 71 degrees outside right now here at Shadow Trader HQ. I wish you good trading and good night.